empty He never really found a place Thought heaven's a hang on Haunted in the highway He's a beeline Well, good morning, buddy. How are you today? Well, I was thinking, since we're not going to get to go to the park for the next week, we should probably do it today. What do you think? Are you up for a little bit of a park trip today? That would be a yes. Okay. Sounds good to me. Days with Jordan the Lion and this little monkey jaw begins now. All right. Park time with my buddy. Well, we're almost there. You can see the Hollywood sign. Well, good morning, my friends. It's a pretty busy day out here at the park today. I think, I don't know, I guess people graduated or something, so they're out here taking photos. I don't know, group photos. They're jumping in with the Hollywood sign behind them. Well, John and I are hanging out here. Let him stretch his legs, have some fun. And then since we have such a big week ahead of us, I have a bunch of errands to do today, and we're going to do our vlog in between all of that. Thanks for coming and seeing me. I hope you guys are having a great day. Beautiful day out here at the park, that's for sure. Totally looking forward to our upcoming week. Oh, and I wanted to give a heads up that I posted the April question and answer on Patreon last night. So if you've been waiting on that, I always do one of those per month. That's now posted, you can go watch. I'm a little bit bummed because I found a really good price on a night at the Madonna Inn, which I've wanted to vlog for quite a while. All the rooms are completely different. The problem is, no pets allowed. And technically, he's considered a pet. So I'll have to go do that. I'm thinking maybe I'll do that when I go up to Paso Robles in May. So my friend Lauren and I are going to conduct a little bit of an experiment. You guys met Lauren when we did the, uh, the vlog on Lucy's house over there on uh, Roxbury in Beverly Hills. We're both fans of Doris Day and I texted her last night and said, Hey, I read online that Doris Day still replies to her fan mail. Would you be interested in conducting a little bit of an experiment? Let's both write her and see if either one of us hear back from her and we'll talk about it on the vlog. And so I text her and she said, it's funny you mentioned that because I've been wanting to do that anyway. So she's gonna write her a letter and I'm gonna write her a letter and we'll see if we hear back from Miss Doris Day. You know, just for fun, just something fun to do, see if it happens. I mean, went ahead and included my, uh, my DVD cover of Teacher's Pet. It's the cover is Doris Day and Clark Gable together. So of course that's the one I would love to have signed. And I was really happy to read all the comments about Barbara Stanwyck and Jack Oakey's house. That was a pretty unique experience we got yesterday, and I'm glad so many people enjoyed it. Having fun, aren't you, buddy? So my great friend Kevin last night told us that he's planning on giving up his apartment at the end of the month, and um, he just figures, you know, while I'm looking for a job, there's no point in paying rent when I can, you know, nowadays, especially the field he's in, he's in radio, most of your job um, considerations go through email or through the phone. So he's like, I might as well go and see a little bit of the world while I don't have to be anywhere. So he's going to kind of go nomadic for a little while. And his birthday is actually two days after Jaws. So he's always wanted to go to... Buck Owens Crystal Palace. So I'm gonna kind of surprise him. I know he doesn't watch this, so I'm gonna surprise him when we get back from our trip of taking Jaw for his birthday and everything. And I'm gonna take him up there and we're gonna vlog um, a couple of other things up in Bakersfield again. So we will be back in Bakersfield in about a week and a half or two weeks. I think we're about to get out of here. All right, guys, let's go do the vlog. Now, I always tell you that I have pages and pages of ideas, but I always wait for something to trigger it or something to inspire me to really want to go do a vlog, something pop up that makes it more exciting for me. And yesterday that happened when we were actually touring the Oki Estate 
they told us a little story and it tied in with what we're gonna vlog today and I'll tell you how that all came about and how it all plays into each other. So as they told us different stories and different uh, hypotheses on when things were changed in that house yesterday, one of the things they kept saying was, well, we think this was done with Mr. Oki's first wife, Vanita, and some were done with his second wife, Victoria, which prompted somebody to ask the question, well, what happened to his first wife? And they said, well, though in 1946, Jack Oki and his wife were divorced or estranged, they were still living together and still together by all accounts until 1948 when she died in a plane crash and then they told us the accounts of that plane crash which ties into what we're going to see today. Now as it was described to me was that Jack Oki was supposed to be going to his niece's wedding on the East Coast and was tied up due to filming. So Vanita went ahead in place of him and he was going to join her later. Now this particular flight apparently this plane itself had been grounded multiple times over a four month span before this happened. Um, basically a design flaw with the plane would cause it to combust in the cargo area and so they had had problems with this before. Now during this June flight that Vanita would be taking at some point the sensors went off saying there was a fire. To combat this they I don't quite understand it exactly but they let off CO2 cartridges which were supposed to counteract that but in the process the flight crew was supposed to open the vents in the um, airplane somewhere and they didn't do this. So what ended up happening was the CO2 came back into the cabin and apparently um, made a few of the cabin members or the crew members pass out including the pilots and so they had to put the airplane into emergency mode and the airplane actually crashed. Now Vanita died on this on this crash and like I said Jack Oki was supposed to be there but probably the most notable person on that crash was a man who had started a couple of theaters, one here in Hollywood and one in New York on Broadway. He had done numerous plays and had basically just been a theater impresario named Earl Carroll. Now as I said, Jack Oakey and his wife Anita were estranged. So some say that his next wife Victoria was already in his life at this point and that it was just a matter of time that they were Vanita was going to leave but when she passed away suddenly Jack decided to allow her mother to continue to live at the estate we saw yesterday as long as she wanted he even gave her a living wage and she eventually became one of the housekeepers So like I said, I've been thinking of doing the Earl Carroll Theater for quite a while, although there was just nothing that truly made it a, an immediacy until I heard that story and I decided to do it today. Hashtag love finesse. That's a coffee shop. Do you see the art inside the glass? It's like a two-headed boy type figure. Now if you look, you can see there's some going all along like a domino fashion. Well gang, there it is. If you can believe it, the Earl Carroll Theater Building still exists. And the theater hasn't changed all that much. Now you're probably getting a little freaked out because you see all the uh, construction green tarp but that's just the parking lot it looks like they're doing something with that but i know that apparently they have a plan to revive this they're going to renovate it a little bit and like i said most of the inside is not too different i mean it's different but it, you can still tell that this was the original theater in 1938 Errol carroll moved his well he didn't actually move it he had one theater already open on broadway and decided to open one here 
Hollywood right here on Sunset. Let's go take a closer look. Now at the time this was a 1,000 seat supper club and what they kind of specialized in was having beautiful girls. Earl Carroll had actually a, a big sign up that said through these portals you pass the most beautiful girls in the world and right on the side he would actually have a big neon lit up sign of his girlfriend Beryl Wallace who also perished in that plane crash with him in 1948. Now when this theater opened like I said, it was a hot spot nightclub, dinner theater, dancing girl show review, but it was a little bit more than that because what this theater had was it had a stage that was 60 foot in radius, or 60 foot in diameter, and it would actually rotate, and then there was a rim, and then there was a, and then there was a rim going around it that you could control to rotate in an opposite direction, so you could have performers on both of them that would be able to you know basically create a show with those two um, revolving discs now he also had a submerged floor like an elevator below the floor that you could make a performer rise up to the floor and also had uh, swings coming from the ceiling yeah sorry about all the chaos there was like a crazy homeless guy that heard me talk and I guess he I guess he knew something about the theater he was trying to contribute but he was breaking my train of thought, so. So in 1930, or 1938, this opened, but by 1948, when the plane crash happened, they had to sell the theater. Um, some new owners took it over for two or three years, and it just didn't have the same appeal. Now, what was pretty interesting about this place when it was open as the Earl Carroll is that it had a um, 100 bricks in front that were all signed by celebrities. That was one of its little, like, kind of calling cards along with that big face of Beryl Wallace up on the side of the theater, as well as having this really intricate entryway and en exit way, like big staircase, big grand glass neon pillars inside. And so in the uh, early 50s, it was closed down. Somebody else bought it and they opened up the Moulin Rouge. So the Moulin Rouge was here for a little while and that's where they filmed the, uh, the show uh, Queen for a Day. Now, once the Moulin Rouge left, it went through a bunch of different things. It was, um, it was hullabaloo, it was um, kaleidoscope, it was Aquarius, and when it was kaleidoscope, it was kind of a lo like a, a venue for local bands. So the Doors played here, but then when it became Aquarius, they started filming TV shows, and the Doors also played then when they had gotten a little bit bigger, and they've released those um, performances. You can buy them out there. They're, I mean, they're even on YouTube. Now, <clears throat> now after it was the um, Hullabaloo, Kaleidoscope, Aquarius. Now, during Aquarius, it became um, the place where they did Star Search, where they did all the Jerry Lewis telethons for like 10 years, and it became the home of the Chevy Chase show when Chevy Chase had his own talk show for a short amount of time. Now they actually renamed this theater, the Chevy Chase Theater, when that happened, but because the show was um, pretty much a total flop and canceled after five weeks, almost without saying anything, they just, they just, tore the name off the theater and took it back to being what it was. And then Nickelodeon took it over, and Nickelodeon filmed like iCarly and all that, and Drake and Josh, and like a lot of the kind of the early 2000s stuff was filmed here, and they recently moved out. I'd say maybe a year or two years ago. So now, like I said, it sits unused, but you can tell that they're doing some renovations on what was the parking lot, and also they would use that for some of the the sets for the uh, the kids shows they had the um, at one point they had the football field for one of the shows but this is the same design of the original marquee you could see it would say Earl Carroll and then theater right here and then Earl Carroll and it would go wrapping around this was three entryways for cars you got to remember like I said it's a thousand a thousand seater for guests and then you can actually see the doors. I think the doors are on the other side of this pillar. And those were the entryway to where was the stage and the, the ballroom, the dinner. 
dinner area. So it'll be pretty interesting to see what will they do with this when they reopen it, or if it will be um, reused as a theater, if they're gonna use it as a museum, if it'll be for rental, what, it'll, what will happen, what the fate of this will be. But yeah, all those different things were once here, from the Earl, Earl Carroll Theater to the well-known Moulin Rouge, Kaleidoscope, Hullabaloo, Aquarius, Sunset Studios, Nickelodeon, Pretty impressive history here. And then right here behind this sign, they actually have a Earl Carroll Theater Memorial Cultural Heritage Commission plaque. Built 1938, declared in 2016. Now I totally understand that I could have restarted over and not had all that chaos in this video, but that's part of living in Hollywood and that's part of the experience, so there you go. Now I gotta hit the store real quick. And that very well could be some of the original neon. And I read online that all the way up till 1998 they had used that rotating stage floor. Basically what they've done is they took all the seating area that was once the Earl Kale and they turned that into a sound stage but the, uh, the stage itself and the moving parts and everything were still underneath. So some of the beautiful women who got their start at the Earl Carroll Theater were Mamie Van Dorn, Vampira, Myla Nermi, and Yvonne DiCarlo, who is well known for being Lily Munster. All right, let's head on home. Well, what's happening, Argyle? How is everything? Okie dokie. Well, good evening, my friends. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I just wanted to thank George Garcia, Danny Ray, and Chip Workman for becoming my newest Patreons. And I thank you for watching today. I hope you appreciated the uh, history that was in that building. It doesn't look like much now, but it's been something's been happening there since 1938 until now. And just knowing all the different little like bursts of history that happened there, it's pretty cool to see. Now come back and see me tomorrow. I've been invited out by a special company to see a very, very special thing owned by a very special person. So have a great night, and I'll see you all tomorrow. I just got a text message. That's right, I have Ric Flair doing the woo as my text message. Have a great night, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye! Woo!